Huge breaking news. The Social Security Administration admits defeat. Ah, a huge win for the good guys here. I'm telling you, I'm stoked. And I nothing, nothing but most respect to Social Security Administration. And nothing but respect to the research who actually did what they're supposed to do, which is find bad info and, uh, and get it out there for all to see. So that way the authorities can adjust accordingly. Hear me, client scientist. Scientists. I'm going to do another video on that, as a matter of fact, here in just a second. And my good friend, Flower Goer Smith from Australia, be advised because we're going to go down to your neck of the woods to talk about client research and manipulation. So watch this. All right. So this is from the Social Security facts and figures about Social Security 2018. I mean, it's literally that's the most recent stuff from Social Security. All right, so and, and, man, I love this stuff. You, you, they used to have these little booklets on this, um, and I, I'm sure they don't do it anymore because it costs too much. But uh, I just how many pages is this? I don't know how many pages this is. Bunch, tons of stuff. September 2018. I'm just, I'm telling you. Okay, so watch. Did you know all these? Did you know? Blah 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 blah. I'm not going to read that. We'll go into all this later. I see. I'm researching my book, and my book. The premise is two things. Housing, get, housing costs scored away and maximize Social Security, and you're going to be good to go in retirement because it's all based on expenditures. It's not based on from income where it comes. I mean, it is based on income from where it comes, but everyone's so focused. I need this round number, this egg. If I have this egg, I can retire. And I said, no, 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 I don't agree with that at all. I think it's based on expenditures, what you're going to spend, and from where you can reduce expenditures, the biggest one, housing, and the, uh, the biggest source of income, Social Security. If you can Reduce the one and increase the other. You are going to be golden, my friends. All right. And so I'm done. You can see all these tabs up here. It's got tons of things I'm researching on, which is uh, which is fun. All right. So anyway, let's take a look. This is from the 2018 uh, trust fund uh, trustees report. Okay. I, we are talking about that. Hold on a sec. All right. So watch. You ready? You ready? Remember, OASDI, by the way, is Old Age Survivor Disability Insurance. Uh, HI is Hospital Insurance. So you have... O-A-S-D-I, Old Age Survivor and Disability Insurance, which is O-A-S, Old Age Social so Survivors Insurance, and D-I combined, and then uh, H-I is Hospital Insurance, i.e. Part A of Medicare. I hope that makes sense. All right, that's not what I want to talk about. I'm just, yeah, but I'm, I'm freaking, I'm, I'm stoked. There's no other way around that. All right, so here, I saw this when I was reading this. I said, huh, if there are any additions or corrections to the data, pub, data published herein, they will be posted as errata on the website uh, right there. So that was kind of interesting. This is pretty prominently placed in the uh, facts and figures about 2018. So, so what's that about? So I'm starting to read down, read about taxes payable, tax rates, and we'll talk all about this stuff. 7.65 for the employee, 7.65 for the employer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm reading them. So, okay, there's your FRA. That's all good. I get all that. You know, there's your uh, benefit payouts, how much they paid as a percent of GDP, which is pretty big. That's all good. So I'm reading them. Say, so here's uh, average wage index. Uh, pretty interesting. All that stuff's good. Here's your, if you work beyond FRA, uh, what they uh, they'll withhold if you work, make too much income. Uh, this, uh, supplemental security income right here. I'm reading all this. Trust fund operations. Average age, just all this stuff, poverty, poverty threshold. And I'm reading, I'm saying poverty threshold. That's interesting. A family for in America, poverty is 25,696. Based on Census Bureau, you know, if you're an individual, uh, your poverty is 11,756, blah, blah, blah. And then I read here. Note. We are suspending publication of the five charts that constitute the income of the aged population section for the 2018 facts and figures. As we evaluate the adequacy of the charts data source, the annual social and economic supplement, also known as the March supplement, again, the, the, the gold standard for poverty statistics and income statistics in the, in the U.S., the, sub, the current population survey from the Census Bureau. Recent research suggests that there may be some issues with the measurement of certain sources of income reported in the CPS. We are dedicated to publishing the most accurate statistics possible, so we are conducting a thorough review of available data sources for these publications and we'll publish findings for this review. For more information, see my man, Adam B. And if you're on the podcast, they don't say my man. I say that because Adam B. and Joshua Mitchell, if there's such a thing as Nobel Prize for finding bad data, 
you got it, my friends. I don't know who these guys are, but man, I would love to have them on the podcast. I'm sure they're going to look at me and say, dude, you are small potatoes for how much people are reaching out to them. They might have targets on their back, though, because Elizabeth Warren and others have based their entire political career on the idea that we're all running out of money and it's a doomsday scenario. Lots of researchers on various academic institutions are based their entire grant writing capabilities on the basis that we don't have enough money and we're all going to run out of money and thus go over that guy. Don't tax me. Don't tax you. Don't tax me. Tax that guy behind the tree. Uh, that's what's happening here. And then give us grant money, too. I mean, I love it. I'm, I'm just uh, it's, it's flipping awesome because we're, you, we're, we're stating unequivocally here. The stuff is jacked, jacked up, and we need to fix it because everything is contingent on these numbers. And the numbers are wrong. Everything else, can, no, nothing else can be believed. Uh, it just it's, it's like these hate hoaxes out there. Once you start going down the route of, a road of seeing all these various hate crimes, you realize they're all hoaxes. You start saying, I can't believe anything. I mean, none of this makes sense. And the same thing goes to cl uh, climate data as well. You're like, wait a second here. Uh, what happened first? The CO2 come and carbon global warming come or global warming come in the CO2? What is it? And if you start saying, well, I'm playing my hat, Al Gore, on uh, CO2 rise leaves a global warming and then it turns out it's the other way around. Uh, can I believe anything else? And then you start diving into the details a little bit more. And you're like, wait a second here. What else is being propagated out there that's simply not true or at least inadequate? And then you start diving into these details, just saying, hmm, let's see here. And then you start being called various and nefarious, uh, bad thing, disparaging things. Uh, climate denier, uh, you're in favor of the capitalist because you don't want more Social Security just being thrown at, I don't know, freaking anyone who comes to the United States. I mean, all this stuff. And you start saying to yourself, wait a second, man. How come on every single debate, one side is reasoned and uh, questioning, all right, agnostic, shall we say, and the other side is always brutal, angry, hateful even. And it, I mean, and when you start doing these researches on various things, climate data, nutritional science, uh, vaccine science, uh, capitalism and socialism. Look, and some of my friends on the right are very, very uh, angry and also disparaging too. But they all, they all have this appeal to authority. And, and that is what needs to be challenged at all times. The appeal to authority. The statistics say this, you know, like, but the statistics, A, either they don't say that or I'm challenging the statistics and they say, are you a science? And I, I did a meme the other day, reposted a meme that said, how dare uh, your Google search get in the, uh, question my uh, medical degree or something like that, as if having a metal degree, medical degree made you beyond reproach to being questioned. And I said, that no, I mean, that's that's the appeal to the authority. I have a medical degree. Your Google search doesn't mean anything compared to my medical degree. Medical degree. I'm like, I mean, crap. It's like, I'm a CFP. How dare you question whether or not I'm a CFP, which is part of my problem is the Certified Financial Standards uh, Board of Standards, which is trying to make that anyone who holds themselves out as a financial planner has a CFP. I said, no, that's, that's, no, that's not the right answer. That's bad. That's well, it's good for CFP because it's limiting barriers of entry, which makes their uh, makes them the only games left standing. It's like forced unionization. And when you do that, you say, if you want to be part of the crew, you got to join us and you got to pay the fees and all that, too. And everyone else who is not going to join us. Sorry. Go dig ditches for a living. That's that's not good. And so anyway, when I saw this, I was incredibly motivated, incredibly motivated. Some two guys from the Census Bureau doing some research that says, hey, things just don't look right. And I can only, I don't know what kind of pushback they got there. I don't know, but I love it. And uh, and this is good. And, and kudos to the Social Security Administration. And I don't know if it's because a new administration there. I, I just don't know. I don't know what's happening in the inner links of the Social Security Administration. Uh, but they they are saying we have, we, we're issuing jacked up numbers before and we need to adjust. And I think it's freaking awesome. I really do. Now, if they can listen to my man, Larry Kotlikoff, now and help widows, all right, because he's made the point many times over. And this is why I'm somewhat, uh, the so it looks like I got horns back there, don't it? Oh, oh. But Larry Kotlikoff has called out the SSA for many years, many years, saying that they're not helping widows when it comes to their filing. And uh, because of that, they caused, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars of benefits not to be received by the people who need it most, which is women, uh, surviving women. And because that's, that's not good. And then when they're called out on it, they basically say, get the hell out of here guys. And, uh, 
And so they had the OIG report, the Office of Attorney General, and they said, dude, you guys are jacked up there, too. So maybe the Social Security Administration is feeling some heat from that with Kotlikoff. And then these guys uh, from the Census Bureau are saying, yeah, we need to change our structure. Maybe with a new administration there, Trump, after eight years of Obama and you know, eight years of Bush, maybe some new blood in there. They're seeing things differently. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. But uh, not hold my breath in that regard. But the fact I see this here right now, man, it, it gets me fired up. So stay tuned, my friends. Stay tuned because the whole point about this is uh, if the numbers are jacked and you're basing your whole living uh, based on numbers that are simply wrong to begin with. And you're thinking, I got to work because the Census Bureau or the Center for Retirement Research or, you know, whatever, you know, the, uh, the by CFP. Maybe that's not true. Maybe. And if it's not true, what does that mean? We shall see. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Subscribe. Thanks now.